What's up, YouTube? Are you looking to get into Shopify app development? Well, you came to the right place. My name's Robbie, and I launched my first Shopify app back in 2019. And since then, I've launched a total of five apps. So I have a really good understanding of the platform as a whole. And in this video, I'm going to give you an overview of app development on Shopify. So we're going to take a look at some of the tools they give you to develop your app. We're going to look at the APIs you'll use. And uh, I'll probably give you some opinions along the way. So if that sounds good, make sure to like, subscribe, and leave a comment, and we'll get right into it. Let's start with a brief overview of how a Shopify app works. So pretend a user came to the app store and they found our app. They would click into it, and then they would click this add app button right here. And what happens is when they click this button, Shopify is going to send a request to our server. So it's going to send the request, and it's going to contain their store URL and some stuff to validate it. And with that request, we'd then generate an install URL and we'd redirect the user to it. And then the user can then accept or decline. And once they hit accept, we're pretty much in. From there, we can generate an access token. And with that access token, we can access these APIs right here. So we have the REST admin API and then we have the GraphQL admin API. And with these two, you can pretty much do any task you want on their store. You can create, edit, delete products, collections, pages. You can uh, get inventory information. You can pretty much do anything. And what's a little bit annoying is once they launched this GraphQL one a few years ago, they started removing features from the REST API, I think for performance reasons. But what ended up happening is they're both kind of incomplete. So say I wanted to create an app-owned meta field. Well, you can't do that from the REST API. That can only be done on GraphQL. And say I want to retrieve a list of pages or really do anything with the page object, there's no way to do that with GraphQL. You have to use REST. So you end up having to use both APIs in your app, and it's a little bit annoying, but hey, that's how it is. Before we get too much further, I just want to note that Shopify has some official tools that handle most of this for us automatically. So you really don't have to worry about OAuth and all that unless you want to. But let's continue forward. Let's say a user installed our app, and they're now in their admin panel. And let's see what happens when we open an app. So let's click this app right here. And it's going to load our app right here. And if we look in DevTools, we can see it's just pulling up our app in an iframe. So all this is hosted on our servers. And if we look at the URL in the iframe, you can see it contains some additional data. So it says, hey, this is an embedded app. Uh, here's an HMAC to validate that it came from us. Here's the shop that's accessing your app. And here's a timestamp. And there's two kinds of apps. There's embedded and then there's, I guess, not embedded, where it just pulls up in a whole separate tab and not inside of the Shopify dashboard. I'm not going to talk about those kind of apps too much. Um, I think Shopify these days really wants to see your app embedded. And uh, when you have an embedded app, you can't use cookies. They want you using session tokens. So this is a whole other thing you have to do with Shopify. And... Um, Basically, you just have to generate a session token before every re request, basically. And that can be done with their app bridge uh, library. And this is another library from Shopify that uh, it basically just handles some of the embed stuff and it lets you generate session tokens. And uh, if we go back here, this one doesn't really do it too much. But um, if you want to make your app look just like Shopify's interface, they have something called Shopify Polaris. And this is basically just a front end component library for React. And you can do normal HTML too, but I think it's mostly for React. So there's just tons of pre built components you can use to build the interface of your app. So now let's talk about the Shopify CLI. This is an official tool, and it's basically going to generate an entire Shopify app for you. So it's going to handle OAuth, it's going to handle session tokens, it's going to add Shopify Polaris. It's going to handle the mandatory webhooks, and it's going to, I think, show some billing stuff also. So once you have the CLI installed, you can come down here, and you run this command to create an app. So let's copy it and try it out. So I'm just on my desktop right now. I'm going to run the command, and it's going to ask you to name your app. I'll just leave it the default, and then you get to pick a template. So with the CLI, you can do a Node app, a PHP app, or a Ruby app. And if you want to use something other than those three, you're going to have to do everything manually. So let's just select Node for now. And it's going to go ahead and download all the files and dependencies. And it's just going to take a minute. 
So it took about a minute to build and it says, hey, your app is ready to go. So let's CD into it and try it out. So let's go CD diversified shipping app. And I'm just gonna open it up in VS Code. And here's everything that the CLI generated for us. So we have some config stuff out here and then all the app code is in the web folder. You can see it creates a Shopify app with the Shopify app express library. And if we go inside of the index file, it's just setting up an app. And it gives us some example endpoints where we're counting products, creating products, and uh, it serves static assets and some other stuff. And then the front end of the app is right here. And if we look at one of the components, you can see that it's using Shopify Polaris and Shopify App Bridge. So let's try to run this app. I'm going to go back to terminal and I'll go npm run dev. And the first time you do this, you're going to have to enter your ngrok auth token. If you don't know what ngrok is, it's a tunneling service and it basically gives you a URL for your local host. So Shopify apps can't run on local host, so that's why you have to use this. You can sign up for free and they'll give you an auth token. And then once you enter it, you can continue on with the CLI. So it's going to say, uh, do you want to create a new app? I'll hit yes. I'll just leave the name, the default. Now it's going to uh, set it up on my dev store, it looks like. And I don't know why it does this, but the first time I run it, it goes black. So I'm going to stop it and run it again. And this time it should go through. There we go. It says, hey, using your previous settings, setting it all up. And it's going to ask if you want Shopify to automatically change the URL for you. You're going to want to do yes on that. And there we go. Our app is now running. So let's try it out. Um, I wonder what happens if I pull this up. No shop provided. So let's just install it and try it out. So I'm on my partner account right here. I'm going to go to apps. And here's the one we just created. I'm going to click it and go test your app, select store. I'm going to pick coding with Robbie. Then our app is going to generate an install URL and redirect us. We'll hit install app. And it's probably generating an access token and all that right now. And now it's going to redirect us and pull up the app. And here we go. We're running our app um, on our store. So you can see it counted the products. You can create products with this app that it generates. And that's pretty much all we got right now. So that's how you can get up and running and now you would just extend what they generated for you so you could add some new endpoints, do some API stuff, whatever you need to do. So if you did want to do everything manually, they do have docs for that also. So say you want to use Golang or something different, uh, you'd have to do all the OAuth stuff manually. So they have instructions here and uh, they basically break it down step by step. You're going to have to validate some stuff, create URLs, uh, manually do some redirects and all that. And um, it's not too bad. I've done it before in Golang. And then besides the OAuth part, you're going to have to do the JWT session token validation stuff. And that's a whole other process, but it's not too bad. So one other thing to mention is that there's also these app extensions. These are kind of additional stuff you can do on Shopify. So there's a bunch of them. So for example, there's admin links. And what that is is say uh, you're on a product page like this one and you wanted your app to add a link right here, you could do that with uh, the admin links extension. And there's really a ton of them. Uh, one of the other ones that's kind of cool is this checkout UI extensions. So if you wanted to add a block to the checkout flow, you could do that. Shopify functions is pretty new. This lets you run, I think it's WebAssembly on Shopify. Um, post purchase, you could show stuff after checkout. And then another one that's really cool is the theme app extensions. So what this does is it lets you add an app block. So uh, they installed our app and we had a theme app extension. We could add an app block. So when they go to uh, customize theme and go say add section, it would show our apps block right here that they could just drag right into their theme. So that's kind of cool because you don't have to edit their theme code anymore. So if you find one that you want to use, you'll really have to look into it individually and see how it works. But some of them can be generated with the Shopify CLI. So say we just went Shopify app and terminal. 
we can see there's some commands we can run. So let's try Shopify app generate. And let's go generate extension. And then here you can generate some extensions. So uh, let's say we want to do a theme app extension. Hit yes, let's just name it the default. And then this went ahead and added a folder in our app. So let's check it out. Here's the folder it generated right here. And if we go in there, we see we get assets, blocks, local, locales, uh, snippets. So let's create a block. I'll go in here and just create a uh, hello.liquid. And then I'm gonna paste in some code. Save it, and now we could deploy this block with the CLI. So let's go back to terminal. Now let's go Shopify app deploy. And this is gonna push that extension to Shopify. Hit yes. And I get uh, an error. Invalid file name in your theme app extension, snippet slash git keep. Uh, so it generates all these git keep files and I guess you have to delete them. So that's kind of not cool. Let's try it again. Shopify app deploy. Hit yes. And there we go, it deployed it to Shopify. So now if we go back to our partner account and we go to our app and um, we click into the app we're working with and we go to extensions right here. You can see we have that extension we just created. So let's click into it and uh, let's create a working draft. I'll do minor version and uh, let's enable it on development stores. So what happened is the theme extension got pushed to Shopify. So all that block code is hosted on Shopify and now we can use it on our store here. So let's refresh. Now let's add a section. And here's that block we created at the bottom. So now we can add code to our theme, which is kind of cool. So that's just a simple example of one uh, theme app extension and you'll have to explore the other ones. And yeah, that's a basic overview of Shopify app development. So we didn't write any actual code in this uh, video, but hopefully you have an understanding of what tools and APIs you can use to build an app. So you're gonna have to learn a ton of stuff to get going, but it can be rewarding if you build a successful app. So would I get into app development today? Uh, why not? I'll tell you this though, it's a lot more competitive than it was a couple years ago. And the app store is a lot more saturated. So I know they're up to over 10,000 live apps on the store. And uh, it's going to be pretty hard to get going if you're a newcomer. But yeah, Shopify app development is pretty cool. I hope you enjoyed this video. Make sure to like, subscribe, and leave a comment. And I'll see you in the next one. Hey, thanks for watching, everybody. If you enjoyed this video, you can click the icon in the middle of the screen to subscribe. And there's a couple videos on the right for you to check out. Till next time. Bye.